uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. There's actually multiple plots all happening at the same time that then all kind of come together in a woods that are kind of magical in a way, but then there's like real world that's not magical. And so that's what's really interesting. And the part I'm singing is Helena, and she and her best friend Hermia have been hanging out together. But because of these love potions that have been going around, the two guys that they both like that should like each one of them are now both in love with Hermia and so are both in love with Helena and Hermia is acting really mean to Helena and so Helena sings the song to her about like what the heck we used to be friends. Yeah, one of the things that I'm singing is um, the role of Macbeth in Verdi's setting of Macbeth and that's a lot more straightforward there's killing and more killing and more killing and then dying. But uh, Macbeth obviously is a character who is, um, uh, he, he's a man who he doesn't really have a moral direction and so his wife gives him one. Unfortunately, it's not a good one. And he starts by killing the king, Duncan, and he goes on from there. And so it's a tragedy of someone not knowing uh, how to, he's going to get his hands dirty by his ambition. The history of classic works is so great and the musicality and just you know just the way everything's been coming together and the thought that you're performing something that has been performed for centuries sometimes I think is just such an amazing feature of classics you know and things that are performed all around the world it's not just you know, here in New Jersey and then we're all doing the same thing it's something that you know transcends cultures. I definitely agree with that. I also think that um, opera in particular is something that takes so much training, both physical, mental, musical, um, that it's not something that everybody does. And, and that, that makes it some, something special, I think, to be able to do that, to, to work hard. And it's really a lifelong effort for an opera singer or anybody involved in that kind of an art. Uh, and when an audience gets what you're doing, that's, that's a wonderful feeling. Mm -hmm. I think some of it's just some of, some of the most beautiful, you know, I always think of a live performance, any live performance is magic. Because even if you've seen the same piece multiple times, there's always something different, whether it's just the acoustics of the room, the performers who are doing it, the intonations and the musicality of the performers singing it, it's always a little bit different and it just always gives me chills because it's just everything it's always different and it always has just a magic to it that you don't get when you're just listening to a song that's been recorded on the radio that is exactly like the way you heard it yesterday on the radio. It's true. I, I teach students who probably get a lot of their music and their, their um, fine arts from uh, the telephone, from, from video. And uh, I, I tell them you've got to go to live performances because there, there's an energy there, uh, an audience responding to something that's happening live. You don't know whether something might go wrong, uh, <laughs> and it often does, and then we have to find ways to get through it. But um, it's also um, just to realize that a person's out there, a group of people are putting, putting their artistry on the line uh, in front of a live audience. That's, that's not an easy thing to do. I think it gives a little thrill too for the performance because you do go out there and you're like, hope it works. Uh, my favorite cocktail is a Manhattan and my favorite dessert is an Oreo cake. So with chocolate cake with an Oreo filling and then vanilla buttercream. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Very specific. Well, I love to bake, but I, I'd say bake Alaska but I it's bake Alaska. Mm. Flames coming off the ice <laughs> exactly. cream. And for cocktails, we're just going to have to wait and see. <laughs>